Hey guys, it's David. If you're watching this video, you probably know what the Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 is. It's their flagship chip for most of 2020. Most flagships use it as a separate 5G modem that makes it really expensive, and it's probably one of the reasons why a lot of phones are over a thousand bucks now. But anyway, well, about two years ago, Qualcomm had another flagship chip out, the Snapdragon 845. You probably remember that one. Well, this was about the same time that a lot of gaming phones were starting to come out. So we saw the Razer phone, we saw some phones from Red Magic, and Asus in particular went to Qualcomm and they said, hey, we're making this phone the ROG phone and we want it to be the best gaming phone around. Is there any way that you can like overclock the 845? We'll add an extra cooling and we just want this chip to be the fastest it can possibly be because we want to be the gaming phone on the market. Well, this turned out to be a pretty good move for everyone involved because Asus got one of the fastest phones available at the time and Qualcomm realized that it could make another skew of the phone that's just overclocked a little bit and sell that as a totally different processor for manufacturers that wanted to sell super fast phones. So you can fast forward to one year later and we've got the Snapdragon 855 Plus. Now this is a totally separate SKU that Qualcomm made for anyone that really wanted to use it, but it was made around that fact that Asus just wanted that overclocked binned chip. And it did really well. Asus used it in its ROG Phone 2. It was used in a couple of other devices. And yeah, it's an expensive chip, but for gaming phones that want to get the most FPS possible out of their devices, it's a big selling point for consumers that want the latest and greatest processor available on the market. So that was around a year ago, and Qualcomm kind of figured out that this is a thing they should probably do every single year. And thus, the Snapdragon 865 was born. So you're probably wondering what's new in this chip, and that's a fair question. Last year's 855 Plus was basically just an overclock on both the CPU prime core and on the GPU. And by and large, that is mostly what the 865 Plus is too. Now Qualcomm is rating the prime core on the 865 plus at 3.1 gigahertz, which is actually a pretty big deal because that breaks that three gigahertz boundary that we've been looking at for a really long time. The Snapdragon 865 was 2.84 gigahertz. So boosting that to 3.1 is actually a pretty big increase. On the GPU side, Qualcomm says that it's about 10% faster than the GPU in the 865. Now, they wouldn't give us exact numbers and we're gonna have to test this ourselves, but a 10% jump is pretty big, especially when that GPU is already pretty good. With the Snapdragon 855 Plus last year, that was kind of it, a CPU and a GPU boost. But this year, Qualcomm's also thinking about connectivity. So they've upgraded the 865 Plus to the FastConnect 6900 suite. And it's not a huge bump, but it is kind of a nice quality of life improvement. You're getting Wi-Fi 6E instead of just Wi-Fi 6, that's the newest standard. You're getting Bluetooth 5.2 instead of 5.1. These are things that are probably going to be in most of the phones that come out with Snapdragon 875s later down the line, but it's nice that you're actually going to be able to get that this year. Now, conveniently, we also know a couple of phones that are coming out that are going to use the Snapdragon 865 Plus. Asus has confirmed that it's going to use it in the ROG Phone 3, so that should be a super fast phone on its own. And Lenovo is actually coming out with a Lenovo Legion gaming phone later this year that will also be using the 865 Plus. And I'm sure we'll see a lot of other phones using the 865 Plus this year. I personally thought that last year, Samsung should have used the Plus model in the Note series, but they didn't do it. Maybe we'll see that this year. I have no idea, but that would be a really nice way to actually differentiate the Galaxy S line from the Galaxy Note line that comes out much later in the year. So that's about it for the 865 Plus. Now we do have an article on this down below. Of course, it's not that much new information. So pretty much everything that I told you here is gonna be what you're gonna get over there. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on the 865 Plus in the comments section down below. Is there any phone that you're looking forward to that you're hoping has this chip? Let me know and I'll catch you in the next video.